Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 13th in a series of video tutorials on how to create a first person shooter in Unity 5. So this episode um, is one of the most requested ones we've had. We're going to create a muzzle flash for our pistol here. It's fairly simple. There's a few little tricks that um, we'll be doing on here involving particle systems and lighting. And then we'll be modifying one of our scripts to enable us to actually see the muzzle flash. So firstly, let's actually create it. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to drag in a texture and I'm going to import this, a flash. So I can bring it straight into Unity. And if you want this particular texture, just head over to the website, go to Downloads and Assets, FPS section, and you can download it for free. So although it's got black around it, we'll be eliminating that and all we'll see is the flame along with the light when we're finished. So let's head to our gun. So if you click it, M9, right click, and then go all the way down to particle system. Then you'll have all these little sort of white particles blowing everywhere. We now need to modify this so there's only one and it is going to be this flash that we've just imported. So I'm going to start by uh, renaming it. I'm going to call this muzzle flash and let's play with the settings. Now, firstly, we need to put the start uh, lifetime. Let's change this to, in fact, no, let's do the speed first. Let's do the speed as one, so it's fairly slow. Uh, size will keep as one. Um, let's change the start color to a more kind of orange color. In fact, what we'll do is let's put it, um, click that little sort of pipette up there. And you can select one of the colors down here on the uh, flash. So let's have it as that orange. So now you can see it's kind of sort of fiery because that's technically what we're creating. So next, uh, max particles. By default, I think it's set to a thousand. We just want one. Now it looks crazy now. So we'll have that float up there. Five seconds later, another one and so on. So next we need to go to shape. Um, I'm gonna keep it as cone to be honest. I'm gonna have the angle as zero and I want the radius as small as possible. So I want this to be 0 0.01. So let's put the, uh, in fact, let's change the start speed to zero. And we can see that it kind of hovers over this little section here. So I'm going to pull it kind of to the front of our gun. So about there, I think. That looks just about good enough, I would say. So the next thing we need to do is we need to drag and drop this flash onto the muzzle flash itself. And you can see it creates that. So we need now, uh, sorry, we now need to get rid of all that black all around it. And if we go down to here, you can see the actual uh, material has been created, but it's automatically set to particles alpha blended. So if we just expand that, we can see a few little more settings, but we need to click on this drop down menu here. We need to go to particles and create an additive. So now we can see that it looks a bit more like a muzzle flash. So you may need to adjust the size of it depending on how you want it to appear. So I'm going to press play just to give you an example of how it's actually going to look. So it'll look like that for a split second when we've fired. So you may need to decrease the size, you may need to increase the size. Um, it's entirely up to you. I'm not going to increase or decrease for now because I don't want this tutorial to drag on for too long. Next thing we need to do is on that muzzle flash object, right click and go to light and we want a point light because we want it to kind of light up as we're firing as well. So the color, firstly, let's select our little pipette tool and let's click on this flash again. So we want a nice orange color. That looks fairly decent. I want to change the range to, let's try just one or two. We don't want it too bright everywhere, but we don't want it too shallow, if, if you know what I mean. Let's increase the intensity to eight. And you can see on the floor below, it's kind of created that little sort of uh, lighting effect. 
I don't want it too much, so I'm going to have it as five, I think. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to rename as well, and I'm going to call this um, muzzle light. So now theoretically we've created the muzzle flash, um, but well, as you can see, it's on all the time, whether we fire or not. So, in fact, let's pick up some ammo. So if you can imagine what this will look like when we've fired. So what we need to do is we need to modify a script which will allow us to only see this when we've fired. So first and foremost, head to the muzzle flash and untick the active there. Head to the scripts and the script. Oh, I think what scripts we'll, we'll do gunfire, It'd be easiest in this one, I think. So within this script, what we're going to do is we're going to add a variable, which will be the muzzle flash. We will set it active and then we'll deactivate it after a split second. So once your script's opened in MonoDevelop or Visual Studio, above the function update, let's create a variable. Let's call it flash. And that is going to be a type game object. So we need to put this bit in a certain place within here. So if you remember, it's checking if we have enough ammo and it's checking if we're pressing the fire button. So we now need to put our muzzle flash right before the animation. So what we do is we do flash dot set active in brackets. True. So at this point, it's put it on, but it hasn't turned it off. What we need to do is a split second later, we need to turn it off, but we can't do that in our function update because we're using the wait for seconds line of code. So we'll need to put a new function and we can call this function anything we want. So let's do function. Let's have, let's think of a decent name that we can have. Let's do muzzle off. Muzzle, off, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and the line of code, well, two lines of code. First one is yield, wait for seconds, and in brackets, um, 0 0.1, close bracket, semicolon, and then we need to do flash dot set active, in brackets, false, close bracket, semicolon, and close the function. So after we've done our flash, set true, we need to then call this function right after. So we can do muzzle off, open close bracket, semicolon, and save the script. So if we head back to Unity now, and we press play, let's try it all out. Hopefully, We'll be able to fire our gun, firstly, with no ammo, and we shouldn't see our muzzle flash. We don't. Let's pick up some ammo. Oops. Schoolboy error. On the gunfire script, which is um, on here. So on your M9, we place the gunfire script. It does help if you actually drag and drop this muzzle flash object onto the flash game object there. So drag and drop onto there. Let's save our project and press play again. Uh, let's pick up some ammo. And there we go. You can see our muzzle flash appears and disappears in a split second. So you can play around with the settings a little bit more if you wanted to on this muzzle flash. For example, you could always change the um, size over lifetime. So if you go to here, click the tick button and click on the gray box, you can adjust the size over lifetime here. So as soon as we fire it, it shrinks in size. So let's have a look what that looks like, if it makes any difference at all. So let's grab some ammo. It's not really making much of a difference. Maybe if we change our um, duration to 
0 0.1, maybe it will have a bit of a nicer effect. But you can always change how your muzzle flash looks. And to be honest, we'll be doing that anyway as we go further into development, i.e. other guns. So I'm going to keep that as that for now. Uh, I'm going to save my project. Last thing we're going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to quickly adjust some lighting so our muzzle flash has a bit more of an effect. So I'm going to go to Window. I'm going to go to Lighting. And by default, you should have default skybox set as your skybox. Um, I'm not going to import any, but I'm just going to have none for now. And you can see that it's much darker now around our scene. Uh, ambient source, color, let's keep it as color. Um, we have a directional light as well, which is the one creating our ob uh, sh sorry shadows right now. And I'm going to delete that. So we probably should have a big black screen now. So game object, light, and I'm going to go point light. I'm going to drag it up a touch. And I'm going to change the range to, let's change it to 20. I'm going to change the color to a sort of slight blue color. OK. And if you remember, what we did with this door over here, can't really see it on my screen right now because it's too black, is we used a normal map. And we also did that for our crates just here. So I'm going to take the texture, which is on this wall, I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to do the same as what I did with the door and the crate. Quickly change it to a normal map and apply. And then on that texture, drag and drop that normal map onto the normal map option. And you can see just there. And once again, I'll do the same with our floor and the side of the wall. So we have tile 001. I'm going to duplicate that. And yep, you guessed it. Normal map and apply. And then on the material for it, on floor 001, drag and drop onto normal map. And I'm going to press play again. And there we go. It looks a bit better now. It looks a bit more atmospheric, I think is the more appropriate word. But we still got it here we need to sort. So let's change that. So on this one, on lower wall, we need to drag and drop our tile normal map again. And there we go. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this point light now and bring it over this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enclose the whole area by duplicating floor 001 and dragging it. Oops. Sorry. Select the right object and drag it upwards as though it's a ceiling. So let's pull these point lights down a touch. So I've selected the two there in the hierarchy so they come down together. Drag them across a little and then down. And let's press play. So hopefully you should be able to see the fact our little room is coming a bit more to life and looks a bit more like an actual game rather than just um, some objects we've put together. Lighting, normal maps combined in the right sort of uh, combination can actually make your game look pretty good as long as you spend a bit of time actually working on it and doing it properly. So what I'd recommend um, when you finish this tutorial it's playing around with the light, play around with the normal maps, because you can always play around with the strength and the filtering. So you can alter these things here, increase the bumpiness or decrease the bumpiness. I think by default it's always 0 0.25, but I, I would recommend playing around and seeing what you can do. So let's revert. Uh, so last thing I'm going to do is once again, create a normal map of wall 001. Normal map, apply. And on this wall here, I'm just going to apply that normal map. I think it's called wall 004 now. And let's just drag and drop onto there. You can also change the metallic look of it and the smoothness. So it might be worthwhile. So let's quickly change uh, metallic and smoothness here. 
So you can see that the room has a now different effect because we've changed the settings just here. So let's do one last change on this one here to make it more metallic, a bit smoother. And same with the floor, a bit more metallic, a bit smoother. And let's press play. Okay. So we're we're getting pretty we're getting somewhere now, it looks fairly decent. Okay, so next episode we're going to go further into mechanics. We're going to look at actually setting up um, maybe a tutorial level that our players can play through. Uh, maybe a bit more with lighting. We're going to look at picking up the gun rather than just starting with it. And eventually we're going to look at bringing another gun as well. Perhaps um, a, machine, a machine gun of some form. This is where our muzzle flash will really get into customising how it looks. So until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.